This is a quick update for any of you guys who care. I've been getting a lot of questions about the Hagstrom. I've really appreciated all of the comments that you guys have been leaving about the Rickenbacker. I have taken all of those comments to heart. As I've told you guys before in the earlier videos, I've always wanted a Rickenbacker. So at some point, I am gonna get one. I've changed my mind again. Unfortunately, I was having some issues with the Hagstrom and I brought it to Guitar Center's attention and they recommended that I go on and bring it back. So I did. I had it for a couple of days. I called them and said, look, there's some things about it and I feel like I'd have to put money into it. And I just asked them, I said, you know, what would you do in my situation? Because I do like the bass, but there's just some issues and I'm concerned and I'm gonna have to put money into it to make it right. And I think for the money that I'm spending, and I think for that amount that it's fair to want your instrument to be ready to play right out of the store. Wouldn't you feel that way? So anyway, it was all amicable. There was no fighting or anything like that. The guy just said, sir, I think you should just bring it back. And when I brought it back, the funny thing is they were kind of happy to see it and it was in perfect condition. I didn't get a scratch on it. Like I said, I only had it for a couple of days before I returned it. To any of you who were misled by that and said, oh, you know, let me go run off and get a Hagstrom. I still think they're cool basses. I love the way they sound. Once again, uh, we had one person who didn't really understand what I was saying in the video. For a semi-hollow bass, for me, it was everything that I wanted a Hofner to be. The Hagstrom. The Hagstrom Viking, to me, is a much better buy than a Hofner violin bass, which is what Paul McCartney used to play or made famous. I just don't like those basses. Um, I like the way they look. I thought I would like it. I love the sound that Paul McCartney was getting out of them but you have to play them a certain way. And that was one of the things that I learned about that bass as time went on, that you have to play it a certain way, you have to put certain strings on it, flat wounds especially, to get that tone, that Beatles-esque tone that you want, if you want that. But I'm not really looking to get that all the time. I just kind of wanted that semi-hollow sound from time to time, and I thought that the Hagstrom was a good way to go. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. There were issues with the frets, and I was still having issues with the uh, pickup selector switch. So, like I said, it was a peaceful return. There were no hard feelings. I buy things from Guitar Center. I've bought a lot of gear from Guitar Center over the years. They know I'm not that kind of guy who comes and buys things to try it out and take it back. I don't do that. You know, I don't take that very lightly. As I mentioned in the other videos, you, you kind of need to make sure that you really want something when you buy it. And, the Hagstrom Viking was, even though I kept going back and looking at it over and over, it was still an impulsive buy because I didn't make sure that things were gonna work out with the frets. But now all of you know, and I'm gonna put this in the other video so people can know what happened with me and that Hagstrom Viking. It's gone. At the end of the day, I want a really good Rickenbacker. I've got my P-Bass, which I love. I wouldn't mind having another really good Stingray. And from there, I think that I would have like the core bases covered for like studio recording type stuff. Um, as far as all around bases, it's really hard to get everything I want out of one base simply because sometimes I want to play fretless. Sometimes I want to pick the bass with a, a pick, which is rare. Usually I just prefer to use my fingers. There are a lot of things that I want out of a bass, and right now I have yet to find one bass to rule them all. I'm not sure if it exists for me. Uh, the closest thing that would come to that would have to be my 1966 Precision bass. That would have to be the closest bass that I have to having one bass to rule them all.